guys, Envy here once again for another video review, and today we are in a 2001 Audi TT. Now, the 2001 Audi TT has been kind of this like black sheep of the Audi community, in my opinion, because the new TT RS is so fantastic. It's got the inline five, which the Audi TT is named after the Isle of Man TT, I believe anyway. This one came with a four cylinder turbo and it came with a tiny little guy, tiny little turbo. So it wasn't really much of a horsepower freak, but it was known for its decent handling. But a lot of people didn't like this first gen Audi TT because of its shape. It has this very egg-like VW bug like shape. It was like a VW bug on steroids. And with this four cylinder, this four cylinder delivers power in a way that is comparable to almost a 4G63. I get a lot of Evo vibes from this when I get into the power band, which I never thought that would be the case. I thought, okay, he put a bigger turbo on this, it'll be a little bit faster. Oh no, it's a lot faster. This car actually, on a bad tune, made 380 wheel horsepower, and now he has a retune. He hasn't had a dyno tune, but it's probably 400 wheel horsepower, and it's all wheel drive. He also has something that created a 50-50 power distribution to the Audi TT, instead of, I think, the normal 70-30 power distribution. So when you get on it, you get this hard yank of all four wheels, and it's actually pretty exhilarating. You don't see many crazy modified versions of this car. When I got the email, I was very intrigued and I could not wait to do it. This car is blonde by my buddy Isaac, who was nice enough to let me drive it. So big thanks to you, Isaac. This has a built motor, a bigger turbo on it, and also coilovers. And that's about it. The interior of this Audi TT is not bad, but I can say that you can see that Audi has definitely improved over the years. Their interiors now are so nice with the flat bottom steering wheels, so on and so forth. And with this, all of these aluminum vents and everything is true aluminum. It's not fake. So that's pretty cool. The shifter is really weird in this car, I will say. It's this very short and wide shift knob that's like that big around. And there's really weird feel. As soon as I went into first gear, I thought it was first gear to move it out of the parking lot, I went in reverse. So there's not much of a lockout either. And the shifts in the shifter aren't really like notchy. It does have a little bit of play in the shifter, but it makes all kinds of good noises. Oh, the turbo flutter, the wastegate, everything is really sweet about it. The gauges very much so remind me of a Miata. It's very simple. And the tachometer doesn't have it in like one, two, three, and four. It has it in like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60, and 70, rather than just the single digit, which is kind of weird. He also used one of his air vents for the boost gauge, and this car right now is on a very conservative 20 pounds of boost. At one point, he drove it at 30 pounds of boost all the time, and he's had it for quite a while. Another thing about this is the two-tone look he has going on. The car originally was black, and then they did the bottom half in this beautiful blue. It has this very beautiful flake in it, and I really think the two-tone works for this car. Usually I'm not a big two-tone guy, but I think it works. Notice the car does not like slow shifting. I was kind of granny shifting, just barely getting into it, and whoop, revs came up. So you kind of like an S2000, you, you have to keep up with the car. It's not the other way around. Listen to this, guys. This is fourth gear. <laughs> I think I found a flaw on the TT. Window up. Wait. When? Can you go up? Up. I use the force. Even though it is a bigger turbo, I love how the car distributes the power. I'll go to third gear right now and just ease into it and look, uh, into boost already. And you get that very satisfying turbo flutter every time you let off the gas. Oh man. Oh my God. I'm just never ready for the power to come on. Dude, you go around a corner, it just shoots out. It's ridiculous. 
it's so torquey. That's what I wasn't expecting. I was expecting lag, 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 and around the corner is just ready to freaking rip. The four cylinder in this has a nice deep growl to it too. It doesn't have that kind of riciness, you know, sound that's a stereotype of a four cylinder. But turbos tend to do that. They tend to baffle things out and clean things up a lot. The Audi TT also came with <clears throat> back seats. Yeah, okay, this is a two-seater car. I don't care what people tell you. It's like Porsche when they have 911 seats in the back. Whoa. Oh, we had tire squeal and all-wheel drive. Whoa, this thing is fast. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> we had a little bit of crab walk in there for a second. I, did, I was not ready. He wasn't ready. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta keep up with the car, and I'm not doing a very good job. Wow, that was pretty nuts. We also have very good brakes in the car, and we have BBS wheels all the way around that create a very classy style look. It's hard to go wrong with BBSs, it always has. The first generation Audi TT definitely has more of a feminine look compared to the more modern ones. They really made the new ones much more masculine, and a lot more people went after them because of their performance and everything, and their zero to 60s and all that are just nuts. But with this car, I really am shocked how much fun it is, really, truly. I thought it was, I didn't think it was gonna be slow, but man, it's, it's pretty fun. I will say though, since I don't own the car, it might not be, it might just be me, but it's pretty difficult getting into second gear. It's probably me though. This car at one point did completely melt a valve because he was doing a fifth gear pull. The motor had a lot of load on it, and that's all she wrote. Bye-bye. All-wheel drive, man, is just one of those things where you kind of have to recalibrate because it handles so much different from, say, a rear-wheel drive or a front-wheel drive car. Rear-wheel drive, if you get in a nasty situation, you let off the gas, and pretty much everything's okay. This, you kind of have to get in it to get out of a bad situation. Also, the seating position is a little strange in the TT. It's a good driving position, but I feel like I'm on top of the car more than like one with the car, if that makes sense. Let's drive to third. Whoa! Barely in it. Grip, 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 and out of the corner! brakes need some work actually. Yeah, they uh, got some vibration in the brakes. to do these quick shifts because I just I don't think I have enough seat time in this car but when it comes to just staying in one gear and going around corners and just kind of easing into the next it's great another thing too about this car though it does have oil blow by I can actually smell a little bit of the oil and when he was at 30 pounds of boost he said he had to carry oil around with him all the time and he would have to check it every 24 hours to me that's no way to live when you have a performance car but that's why he dialed it down to 20 pounds of boost and this is bloody fast enough at 20 pounds of boost, let me tell you. Listen to these sounds though, it's just great. <laughs> Alright you guys, I hope you all enjoyed this quick little review of the Audi TT with a big freaking turbo on it. I know I did. What do you guys think about the first generation Audi TT? Do you think it needed a little bit more tweaks or do you think it was just fine? Let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy, have a fantastic day. Woo!